Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. Today we're going to talk about exponential functions, which are a really important uh, mother function <laughs> uh, for differential and integral calculus, which is what you're in. Um, I don't know why that's doing what it's doing, but hopefully that's not an issue. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Um, the exponential function, the form, again, this should be reviewed from your, from your pre-calculus and your Algebra 2 experience with functions, um, is y equals a to the x, where a is greater than zero, and preferably a is not equal to one. Because if it's equal to one, you have a decidedly boring uh, y equals one function, which it doesn't behave the same way as exponential functions do. So let's talk real quick about what this guy looks like. The motherest of all mother graphs of exponential functions is y equals e to the x. Although, when you learned about uh, exponential functions initially, you probably started with something like y equals 2 to the x or y equals 3 to the x. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a coordinate tree. Remember these guys where I go x and I go y and I plot points and do all that good stuff because, again, you probably should have seen that by now. So let's, let's just look at sort of the behavior of it um, so we can get through this stuff without boring you too badly. All right, so we know that y equals a to the x if a, or excuse me, if x is greater than 0, passes through the point always 0 comma 1. It has a horizontal asymptote. It's got a h a at y equals 0. If you think about why that is, it's pretty simple. Now, we will have um, better ways of defining horizontal asymptotes down the road when we talk about things like limits. But as x goes to negative infinity, a positive number raised to the negative infinity is going to become zero. That's pretty easy. And then the other thing that we know about exponential functions, these guys blow up really, really fast. They get out of hand really fast. Now, let's, let's just chill out for just a sec. So let's go slow. Why do we pass through the point 0, 1? Well, if I'm talking about e to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 10 to the x, any number greater than 1, or great, greater than 1, excuse me, if I stick in a 0 for x, that a to the 0 is always going to be 1, right? Now remember, a has got to be greater than 0. All right, so that's pretty simple. Now, the tricky thing about this function is that you got to remember that this horizontal asymptote moves around with it. So if I wanted to do a quick sketch of y equals, for example, uh, let's go 2 to the x minus 1 plus 3. All right, so my mother function is going to be this guy. It's going to be 2 to the x, right? So if you remember from Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, my mother function is 2 to the x. So it's going to look something like this. We know that if it were 3 to the x, it would blow up towards infinity more quickly, and it would head towards the horizontal axis more quickly as well. So let's see. I think I can change the color of this bad boy. Let's see. Nope. Let's change the color. So if it were 3 to the x, just real quick, it would look something more like like that. If it were 10 to the x, it would be even more stark. It would go bam and go up that way. Okay? Let's get back to my black pen so I can get some work done here. All right, so just real quick, if you recall, the way that we move graphs around is we look at this thing, and I say, all right, my, my mother function is 2 to the x looks like the black one. I'm going to move it to the right. It moves opposite the sign if it's inside the argument here, and then it moves consistently with the sign um, if it's outside of 2 to the x. So what I do, what, the way that I teach this, is if I start at 0, 1, I'm going to move over 1 and up 1, 2, 3. Now, the thing to remember is that this horizontal asymptote, it, even though it's not part of the function itself, the horizontal asymptote still moves with it. So when I go to graph this thing, I get, oh, bam, and it looks like that, okay? So pretty simple, very straightforward. It dovetails really nicely with all of the other graph theory that we've played with. Now, let's be careful for a sec. What happens, this is true, if I've got, if I've got a to the x. What does y equals a to the negative x look like? Well, if you remember, if I've got f of x, and I turn that into f of negative x, well, what does that do? You remember? You recall, well, for example, y equals root x versus y equals root negative x. Well, this guy looks like this, and this guy looks like this. It reflects it across the y-axis. 
If I want to reflect it across the x-axis, then I put the negative in front. So all that I do, if I do, for example, y equals 2 to the negative x, I just take my original 2 guy, my 2 to the x, my 2 guy, I don't even know what the heck that means. I take my original 2 to the x, remember, passing through 0, 1, and instead I reflect it across the x-axis. But remember, I want you to look at this from not just a graphical point of view. I want you to look at it from a numerical point of view as well. Why does that work? I, if you notice, I still have this horizontal asymptote, h a at y equals 0. Why is that? Well, this time as x goes to positive infinity, I will get, remember, another way to write this is 1 over 2 to the x, isn't it? Right? And if I take a half and I raise it to huge numbers, I get a, an increasingly smaller number, and I head towards zero. I can't ever get there, and I can't ever be negative. Right? You can't take a positive number and raise it to an exponent and turn it into a negative number. So that doesn't work. Likewise, now look close. If I let x be bigger, increasingly bigger negative numbers, well, for example, let's say 1 half to the negative 8. Well, remember, negative exponents flip fractions around, don't they? So this would become 2 to the 8th, <clears throat> excuse me, which we know is 256. Okay, well, you may or may not know that, but it is 256. All right, so this guy heads for positive infinity. Again, if I take 2 to the negative 0, well, that's going to be 2 to the 0, which is 1. That's why it passes through 0, 1. All right, now... The applications of these are numerous, and you've seen them, you've already played with them. From exponential growth and decay, remember this was a growth model, this guy right here was a decay model, to um, like spreads of rumors, or um, uh, uh, let's see, decay dealing with, with uh, radioactive materials, they're everywhere. I don't want to take up a whole bunch of your time going over those here, especially since most of you have already seen that in your Algebra 2. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end the video here. And we'll, suffice it to say, you've seen, you've played with these before, so hopefully there's no panicking. And um, you'll get some work on it in your lesson for this section. All right? Well, thank you for your time and attention. I hope to uh, see you doing mathematics and enjoying mathematics. And I'll see you soon.